on eBay a few years ago, and as you can see, we have a, a chip breaker, a very simple chip breaker going into them. Hey, welcome back to my shop. Today I wanted to talk about regrinding carbide inserts for the lathe. I showed this previous in the video where I showed the making of some specialized wire threading tools and I got quite some feedback about it and um, for me regrinding carbide inserts is a very valuable process. Um, it's rather stupid to do it in a um, um, heavy production environment because that would negate the um, the advantage of a carbide insert um, all being the same. But for me, doing one-offs, prototyping and small quantities, um, regrinding a carbide insert to a geometry that helps me is a very cheap and fast way to um, adapt to a job. It's um, and also it's it's um, regrinding an insert to a very positive and soft cutting geometry helps me with my uh, rather light duty machines. So I can hold tight tolerances on my lathe with really sharp tooling. You might say that it's, um, it's just as good as grinding your own um, high-speed steel tool or a solid carbide or a braced carbide tool. Yes, kinder. Um, the insert has already, if I regrind the insert, most of the work is already done. It has clearance angles um, to the bottom and it has also a defined nose radius. Uh, most of my inserts are 0.2 or 0.4 mm nose radius, so I don't have to grind that myself. Also, my CCMT inserts that I use already have um, the 7 degree clearance to the bottom included, so I only have to grind a chip breaker and a top rake into them. So, let's look at what we're going to do or what I'm going to achieve in this video. So, let's go. Okay, let's look at these inserts. These are CCMT06 sized inserts. Uh, CCMT defines the geometry, which is this 80 degree um, rhombus and 06 is the size. Um, these are rather small inserts. So this is a, a stock Curosera finishing inserts. I will uh, show the the type number down here and as you can see it has a fancy chip breaker up here and it's all nice sintered but when you take a very careful look at the edge here it has a slight radius very very hard to see on camera but you see this this bright line over here when I tip it up slightly this is the the cutting edge radius and this creates cutting pressure. This is a finishing insert for steel but this insert has a minimum uh, depth of cut of about I think 0.2 millimeters and to make it work otherwise it's, it's just rubbing and creating an awful finish so um, this works in a lot of applications very well perfectly fine um, it's a good insert and I'm I buy these and I use them I use them for semi roughing and finishing but um, when it comes to very tight fits or very close fits and to very light cuts this doesn't work for me because of the edge rate uh, cutting edge radius so let's push this out of the way Then we have these inserts. I have no idea who makes these but I got them in a lot on eBay a few years ago and as you can see they have a, a chip breaker, a very simple chip breaker ground into them. These are actually ground after they have been sintered so this is a 
This has a razor sharp cutting edge here. And these take a, a one hundredth of a millimeter deep cut without a problem, but I can't find them. Um, none of the tooling suppliers I buy from stocks inserts with such a style of chip breaker. I guess um, they are either a specialized insert for aluminum or for very fine finish cuts on steel, but that's just my guess. Um, and all uh, I used them up. I don't have any more of these left in my insert collection. So these are out of the game too. And then what I do normally when it comes to to very light cuts or when I need very low cutting pressure, I grind my inserts. I take an insert to the diamond wheel and freehand. Let's try to, to turn this. I grind a very heavy chip breaker into them and I leave the cutting edge here sharp. So this insert will take a very light cut and exceed very low cutting pressure on the workpiece. That's especially interesting when you do um, long slender parts with a um, thin diameter, otherwise the, the cutting pressure will deflect the part like crazy and you won't have, end up with a, um, a cylindrical part. Um, but as you can see the, the um, hand ground chip break in there is not very defined. Um, you could say it's a mess. So let's get these out of the way too. And this is what I came up now. I take them to the surface grinder and I have a, a little jig set up um, that I will show you later. And I try to recreate something like this, um, this fancy insert up here on used inserts. I take the insert and I grind a heavy chip breaker almost parallel to the cutting edge with about uh, five degree angle in this direction and a few degrees of rake in this direction. And this works spectacularly. Um, they break the chips like crazy because um, the chip comes down here and hits this hard shoulder where I grind the chip breaker in and this deforms and breaks the chip. I have, I still have the the corner radius in front here, which is in this case 0.4 millimeter as it seems, which leads to a very nice finish and it's sharp. So it works on steel with very light cuts. It works in aluminum quite well or perfectly fine. It, yeah, it's, it's perfect for my needs. And with the setup I have on the surface grinder, I can batch these out in no time. I, I, I grind one side, I flip it around, I grind the other side and I put it away and then I do 10 more until I have a box of inserts filled with regrind inserts. So let's let's take a look at the surface grinder and how I set it up. Okay, here we can see the setup. I have my, my big grinding wise with the sign base and the 25 millimeter small grinding wise clamped in it. The small wise is set at five degrees in this direction and you will see in a second why. In the, in the small wise I have a, a normal CCMT turning tool clamped which holds the insert that I want to grind. And I have the tool at an angle of roughly one degree tilted down on the insert side like this. We'll come, I will come to that also in a second. So that's the setup. It's, and the Y's is aligned parallel to the magnet, to the magnetic uh, chuck of the surface grinder or the rear rail of it. So let's get in a bit closer and look what we're doing here. This side of the insert is already ground and I turn, I flip the insert around to grind the other side. What we're going to do is we have a, a straight diamond wheel and 
the 5 degree tilt in this direction will create a chip breaker. A very heavy chip break and it will also remove the cutting edge radius. I also tilted the, the tool holder one degree down on the insert side so the chip breaker gets deeper to the rear end of the insert and that leads to better chip control. The chip wants to flow to the um, back end of the insert instead of getting pushed into the work and might scratch up, scratch up the work. So that's the reason for this angle here. Um, I would say we just grind one and then we talk about it. I have my, my dust collector hooked up to the surface grinder as we're grinding carbide. Okay, let's flip the insert around. And grind the second side. Okay, a few minutes of work and I ended up with this uh, 7 reground carbide insert with uh, 0.2 and 0.4 millimeter nose radius and this gives my used carbide inserts a second life. So let's go to the lathe and see how they perform in different materials. Okay, this is some mild steel, just taking a few cuts to see how they perform. Okay, the last cut was a depth of cut of two hundredths of a millimeter and, uh, um, and it still took a very defined chip. And with heavier depth of cuts it produced this nice curled up chip, so this seems to work. And the surface finish is also not too bad. Let's try something different. Let's try some 77 uh, uh, something something aluminium, 70, 75 aluminum. I don't do much in aluminum, but uh, why not? Yeah, that's the surface finish. It doesn't leave anything to be to be desired. Happy with that. Let's try some brass. This is free cutting brass. Um, Brass, also not a problem. And finally trying some drill rod, which is a tool steel. So, it pushes a bit of a burr in, uh, in the drill rod, but surface finish is also uh, perfectly fine, even with very light cuts. I took a 500 of a millimeter deep cut on this surface and it's still 
as good as it gets. Seems like I found a good procedure to to regrind my CCMT inserts in a very useful geometry that works on um, all the common materials that appear in my shop. Um, in all seriousness, most of my materials are steel and steel and in the recent time I do a little bit of titanium and I think this geometry of this inserts now works very well, especially for the small parts I did in the recent time without having to buy very specialized inserts that I need, that I need about once a few months and are horribly expensive. So, thank you all for watching and see you next time.